Hello, everybody. So today I wanted to have a little talk about UK waves and high performance surfing. We've just had a crazy weekend in Newquay showing the Boardmasters competition. It had waves all week and kind of got me thinking about boards that work in the UK. Seeing as I did a bit of filming, one of our team riders who was down for the competition, Logan Nickel, what design characteristics can be utilized to maximize high performance surfing in the UK? The problem with our waves is they're slower in pace than other countries. Mm -hmm. They're also, the angle in which they come in is quite flat. So our waves tend to be relatively consistent. You can surf most days in the year, certainly in Cornwall, but you're not going to get hollow perfection or little pockety nuggets when it's small. It, it, it's very rare. Usually the smaller our waves are, the weaker they are, they maintain quite a slopey nature. You have to design a board for those conditions and more importantly, you have to design a board within those conditions that will utilize those conditions so you can surf better. A UK board has to be fast. It also has to be forgiving because of the dramatic pace change as we get to our beach break waves you know you can get a good section on a bad wave in england and um, we want to have the speed during the bad section and then we want to have the whip and agility in the good section to be able to perform our high performance maneuvers you want it to gain momentum really quickly and hold through your turns but then you want to kick straight back into gear and keep it on rail out of those turns we don't want to put all our energy into the turn then have nothing left and then get going again and get going again and do a slow pace turn and, and and kill the fluidity and poise on rail that we it's synonymous with high performance surfing especially today my kind of go-to design features that I'd put on all UK high performance boards you'd find in the Rockstar model that Logan's surfing in this video you can see his clips he's utilizing those keys so he's going really really fast through bad sections he's got lots of hold and poise on rail in the pocket when he gets those turns and then he's got instant speed out of those turns he uses the Rockstar and one of the easiest ways to show that you've got a board that's going well in weak waves is if you can get it going on your backhand in weak waves I think it's hard to surf really well on your backhand in weak waves so if a board does that it's got enough lift and poise and hold on rail it's a good board and you're kind of on the right path because I'm a shaper out of the UK and I work with UK surfers surfing UK waves it's just a it's just a set of design principles that work really well together uh, all round but it's, it's a way to maximize UK waves single concaves a single concaves give you lift under your board air under your board so it's least attached board to the water as possible what that means is you can imagine if my hand is on the wall and that's the water if my hands on there it's all completely touching the surface of the water. You can imagine the resistance in trying to move forward because they're both surfaces touching. So concave takes away the vast majority of the, of the volume of the board while it's laying fat out of the water. So you can imagine when you start to gain momentum and more lift, you can get on rail quicker. You're effectively trying to get as little board touching the water as possible whilst maintaining control of that board. So single concave is a really great way to do that. Then extended rail lines. Something that people often miss in weak waves is they decrease their rail lines. I try and extend mine for high, high performance boards as much as possible, meaning I keep parallelity in the outline, so for forward momentum, and I have something to lean on that keeps me stable on slower speeds. Then I don't want flat rockers. Again, it's another misconception with weak waves, you have flat rockers. It's easy and it's fun and you definitely gain some trim, but for high performance surfing, you need that whip round the turn. So you don't want something that's really, really fast and is relatively novel and loose and uncontrollable through a turn. Having more rocker on your extended rail lines gives you the ability to get a better turning radius whilst you've got as little board engaged in the water as possible from your single concaves and your added lift. The other thing is clustered fin setup. So I don't want to elongate my fins, put them right out the back of the board and have a big gap in between my front fins and back fins. I want to bring that back fin slightly higher up the board, which accentuates my turning radius to allow for extra tail kick for, through turns, but it doesn't get in the way too much by adding drag. So it stays out the water. So a clustered fin setup is basically easier to turn, easier to manipulate. You don't have to put so much force into it, which is brilliant because all the time you're doing a turn in a weaker wave, you're losing speed. So you wanna do everything you can in that board to maintain that speed. A flatter deck. Now the flatter deck means you get more foam through this part of the board. So the deck is flatter. That carries more foam, which gives you more stability. More stability means that you can make more mistakes with your maneuvers as you're going slow. Imagine trying to ride a bike really slow, you know, as slow as you can on a bike and you're kind of wobbly. Well, 
flatter decks help with while you're going slow, adding forgiveness to your subtle moves to keep your balance. Then a performance rail, keep it performance. You need that rail to knife into the face of the wave. You can't have a really, really fat rail that doesn't penetrate the water and either slides out for a pivot or doesn't engage in the first place so you don't get on rail and start turning really quickly with hold. A rail is a key feature to your hold and you couple that with the non-flat rocker and the extended rail line to add bite and control through your turns. The key for these design features is to get the best balance between board engaged in the water and forward momentum. You have to fly those close to the red line in weaker waves to ensure that you're maintain, maintaining speed. I keep saying it, I keep banging on about it, but our Rockstar is like our go-to kind of all rounder with all of those design features sort of characterized. Then the next thing that you can do, especially if you're looking for an extra bit of pop, is talking about your flex. You can utilize the construction of your surfboard to add more performance in a wave. This is our ESC Flex Tech. This is what Logan rides his epoxy rock star in, and it's lightweight, like super lightweight. It's stronger than a standard PU board. So this is a give back. This is Logan giving this board back and replacing it for a new board. He's on our team. And as you can see, there is no dings no creases, no buckles, and the only dents in the deck are where his feet go. Really good condition. That's why I'm using this board for this video, so you can kind of see that although it's high performance in the UK, it's also a really, really good option to have as a normal surfboard that bring loading through your turns, dampening the flex. Some epoxies are really, really stiff. That isn't good for weak waves because you need some feedback out of your turns to project. So the Flex Tech is all about keeping that PU-like feel with the epoxy lightweight lift and ping. So it's a brilliant way just to utilize like I say every ounce of speed that a weaker wave will give you there's another way you can sort of enhance your your surfing in smaller waves have a look at have a look at the waves Logan's getting they're kind of small they're on, they're in the UK summer you'll kind of see what I'm what I'm getting at and then yeah see what Logan has to say about surfing his board my fourth rock star in ESE flex technology it's an epoxy so and it's kind of like my groveler really I use it for like I use it in all of our conditions. So whenever the waves are bad in the UK, which is all the time, I pretty much ride this thing. I like it in epoxy because I just find it has a little bit more like whip and clang than my normal PU. You can sometimes feel a little bit dead, especially when the waves are weak. So this thing just feels so lively underfoot and it has that extra flotation. So this is 5.11 and a half um, at about 31 and a little bit liters. Plenty of foam, really, really good for our waves. So I ride this anything from head high below. This kind of technology, it doesn't, like normal epoxies kind of chatter in the wind. This 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 board I've never had any problems with. Absolutely love it. Yeah, it's my go-to.
Nice one, guys. If you've got any questions that you want me to go through, just leave a comment, like, subscribe, share. Let's get this channel out there. We're going to be doing more and more content like this, talking about board geek features, which is what I love to talk about, board design all day. And thank you for your positive feedback so far. Catch you guys in the next video soon. I've got a question. Of course you have. Why a lot of goes go from single concave into like quite hard V out the back? You tend to keep it like much subtler, like sort of actually going like a subtle double concave in the back. Is that like a reason? Because obviously V brings drag, like yeah. sort of. Essentially, but like you can set V up for more back foot or more front foot surface as well, yeah. and you can try and make it neutral. Um, it, it's just about where your board's tipping to pivot and if and how much it needs to. So a flatter board with V in the back gives you a little bit more yeah. tip, so therefore pivot. Therefore, you don't need as much rocker on the turn because your, your V's doing it. So, so you're using rocker as opposed to V, which allows you... It, it's both. It's adding both together. Yeah, you, it's... It's, do I want to stop, turn, yeah. and go, V, or do I want to maintain a curved feature through my turn, then concave, in my opinion. You can add both to get subtleties of both, to get blends, yeah. but essentially, for me, V is, is, is pivot and like holding the board up here, and concave is keeping the board lifted and making sure you're on rail. So technically, concave is you need more commitment and harsher sort of um, force to keep it in. Um, whereas V, you can be a bit cruisier, a bit more subtle, and you're letting the wave dictate your, your pace a little bit more, so it can look a bit nicer. Someone who surfs a V board really, really well, I think it always looks super, super nice and fluid. But I think generally, especially weaker waves where you're not getting much push once you've pivoted, concave all the way. Anything else, sir? I've written, they go faster than other boards. That's, that's a sentence I've written. Um, but I was talking about Logan and Luke Dillon because I, I watched them in the free surfs at the Boardmasters and I could notably see them going faster than other surfers. And I was like, that's the boards, 100% isn't them. <laughs> um, but g being able to utilize speed is key. That is the best feature. How can I have as much speed as possible with as much control as possible um, with as much poison rail as possible? That's gonna get you high performance surfing or Another way to look at it is it's making intricate surfing in the pocket easier. Yeah. So I guess with yours, like, you can get more natural speed surfing off the back foot as opposed to having to like, launch your foot front foot forward. Because I know when I'm surfing like, single to B, I have to put all, as much weight as I can I like, overstretch forward to get speed down the line. You're asking for trim. Yeah, yeah. These boys are asking for... Oh, no, you don't want to hustle it, like, yeah. too back foot, it doesn't like... No, it, it won't, you could, you could, yeah, you could hunker it down. It's, yeah. it's, it's a case of, yeah, I mean, you don't want... Micro foot movements are absolutely fine in shortboard. In fact, they're, ne they're absolute necessity, but you don't want to be, like, here to sort of neutral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in high-performance surfing, you want it to be a very natural-feeling weight shift as you go down. I mean, at the end of the day, people... UK waves aren't that good, right? That's not a secret. But they're so consistent and on the right board, they can be so fun. So whatever way suits you, as long as you're catching tons of waves, you're having loads of fun, you're not getting frustrated, then I, I don't think there's any necessary rule. But for, for me, high performance surface and the feedback I've had from team riders, lift, yeah. speed, and then control. That order. And I usually think V is something that can be added but shouldn't be overvalued in weaker waves. Do you think do you think the prominence of V in that design like a lot of the global boards is that it's kind of quite a generalist sort of shape, so that's why you sort of see it in I think that for the most part As waves it works in lots of different wave types more so like Yeah it does but but with push. So shaped waves, yeah. Yeah because it it's it's transitional, it's yeah, fluid. Yeah, yeah.